Hello guys, today I want to present to you our new updated course on Laravel Daily, this one, how to structure Laravel projects. With the idea that we will update a lot of courses, majority of the courses in 2024, for now for Laravel 10 and then for upcoming Laravel 11 in text format. So that's the idea. We're updating older popular courses first to text format from video. So actually this how to structure Laravel projects was a video course back in 2022. Now it is in text form updated for newest trends and newest ideas and examples. And this is the second course in 2024 that we updated. First was built Laravel APIs. My idea, my personal goal is for Laravel daily to be updated as much as possible, including version numbers in the titles of the course. So how to structure Laravel 10 projects, then we will rename it to how to structure Laravel 11 projects and so on. Because it's frustrating. You Google something, you land on a course or tutorial and it doesn't say which version of the framework or language is it for, when it was created, and basically, can you still trust that code? My latest personal example, I landed on this DataCamp website to learn natural language processing in Python, and nowhere it is said when that course was created, updated, or which version of Python or libraries it uses. Although the site seems credible with a lot of professional logos, course description and stuff like that, even if you scroll down, there's no date, there's no version. So yeah, I want to avoid that on Laravel daily with updating the courses in the first place and also specifying the version in a really clear way. Now let's get to the topics inside of the course. So the goal and the problem actually for structuring the project is list of these. So for example, if you don't want to overload your controller methods, probably you should offload that logic somewhere else. So where is that somewhere? So many options in Laravel. But the main thing, the main idea of Laravel is flexibility and it's your personal preference how to structure the project. It's your project. So whatever fits your team, your vision and your project, go with that. So that's why throughout all this course, I repeat that you may move some code to somewhere, but it's not must, it's may, you may, you can, you can choose, but there's no obligation. For example, validation, the first lesson. So we're working with this controller method with quite a lot of code. It may be more, it's kind of almost a fake example, but with pretty real structure. So for example, this, you can, you may offload that to form request class. So you can do make request, you can provide the rules here and then the controller is shorter because you use form request class here and then request validated is the result of that class. That's one of the options to shorten the controller. And then in each lesson, by the way, I will provide two examples from open source project. For example, here in the project of accounting, there's a form request class which shows a few extra things. First, that form request class doesn't necessarily have to be named with form request as a prefix. That's your personal preference again. And then it's a bit more complicated structure for rules. So for example, picture sale price and purchase price are variables which are then part of the validation rules. So it's an example of a bit more complicated structure which would totally overload the controller if it was in the controller. The second lesson of the course is about mutators or observers, and they seem to be different topics, but if you want to modify the data before saving it, for example, in the controller store method like this, you can offload that logic to mutator or observer. So earlier in Laravel, I saw a lot of people doing something like that static creating in the booted method of the model, but later mutators came into the scene and people started using this syntax. This is a newer syntax of mutators. You can do set start at attribute instead, older version of the syntax, or in observer, you can create creating method with the same logic. Again, these are just the options. It's your choice which to use if any, because maybe you're a big fan of visibility of the code in the controller, 
so you may totally leave those two lines in the controller and that's fine then the developer would be reading the code as it is actionable in the controller itself without looking for that logic somewhere else but these are the options another option is to offload the data to services or actions for example to create a user you could create a class called user service and this is just a php class this is not a laravel class so that's why there's no make service command artisan command so you create a method and you just call that method from the controller for example like this or you can type hint it with class name in the method parameter or you can use actions which is almost the same thing so separate class with the method which you then call from the controller the difference is in structure of that class services are more like a structure for a specific entity like user service with many methods and action is a class with usually one method like handle execute or something like that which may have private methods inside but usually is just one action of for example create user update user and stuff like that and again it's your personal preference whether to use service or action or none of them so yeah lesson by lesson i discuss various options where to offload the logic from the controller with open source examples at the end and with extra resources to read after that course so this course is kind of an overview i realize that people don't need longer courses they need the answer to the specific question so this course will answer the question what are the options to offload the logic to and then depending on which options you prefer and the projects that you work with you may dive deeper into separate patterns or separate tools or separate options for example in this course i don't talk about ddd because it's a separate very deep dive i don't talk about solid patterns because i have a separate course two hour course just on that it's a very deep dive and it's more architectural topic outside of laravel it's more about php and object-oriented programming as architecture and it's more theoretical actually than practical so in this course a lot of practical examples on the main core things and mostly common use cases but with extra resources then you may want to dive deeper into api structure full stack structure with either livewire or vue or react and then you may dive deeper into multi-tenancy solid code package creation and other topics from the community like ddd like modular laravel pretty recent course on laracasts so each of those are like easily two hour video that's why i didn't pack them into the same course so the current laravel structure course it's mostly about app folder and controllers and structure of those laravel classes in 10,000 words which you may go through in an hour or so if you have any ideas how to improve it or questions shoot them in the comments below and i may shoot separate videos on this channel discussing specific topics on specific structure places of laravel projects and i will keep updating older courses to laravel 10 and laravel 11 when it comes out in 2024 that's it for this time and see you guys in another video